What is going on everybody? Welcome back to part 2 of the Mesopotamia AI only battle. I hope you enjoyed episode 1. We'll probably get some more more of the action today as the sieves get a little bit nearer, start to fill up a bit more of the space. I think particularly in the western part of the map, we've got three sieves that are very close to each other. You've obviously got the Assyria Babylon war unfolding. Um, and obviously Persia and Arabia and Egypt, I should say, are getting closer to each other. And obviously Persia will come in from the side as well. And Arabia completes the Mesolium. It's Halicarnassus, so another wonder. Obviously they're all going to have quite a few wonders, I would presume, by the end. They've also added another Red Sea coastal city, which could, could... I mean, Egypt's only got one, so it might not be too useful, but could be useful. We have two cities falling in the save turn, Assyria grabs this city here and we also see Greece take one off Byzantium that could be big but Greece now pieces out with Byzantium Egypt completes the Petra very good for them a lot of desert it's gonna make a lot of use of these tiles for them and I believe I just saw Arabia slap down another settler they are they're not slowing down with the settling they're going for every bit of land they can possibly lay their eyes on which is fair enough more than entitled to do that and oh, just like that, within a few turns, Assyria grabs another city as Byzantium is the first sieve into the Renaissance era. We get our spy, but yeah, it's not looking good. Babylon, it has the Great Walls, um, and well, it has its own Great Wall because it's Babylon, the Babylonian Great Wall, and then it has an even bigger wall. That ain't going to be enough because they have zero units. This could be painful. And also, the Great Wall slows movement. That doesn't really help when there's only one tile <laughs> sort of border. Not too useful. Assyria also does settle a city, so maybe they're going to start to come to life now. And yeah, if they get Babylon, they will be looking very good. Obviously, they will then get the benefits of the Great Wall. So very quickly it flips. Arabia with the first very far away city. <laughs> Just popped down, and Persia's added quite a few more, and continuing to add more, more land to their empire. But it's still very early stages. They're, they're, they're exploring. They're doing their thing. Persia is probably going to kill this city-state amongst all of this. And Egypt also grabbed the city very far away with four copper resources. And now we have a war between the two. It looked like the units, either Egypt, I think Arabia declared this based on where they stood, but either they, I think they both just like, it looks like they've just agreed to fight. <laughs> like they were both look, walk, marching towards this area, which is kind of cool. But yeah, we'll see how these opening opening exchanges go. Arabia, if you settle and steal this wonder, that would be that would be quite smart. And the wheat tile. So far, a few units dying on each side. Babylon is our first Civ remaining. Uh, not remaining, they're dead. They do have a great general. That'd be a pretty cool personal story, I guess, for the great general. He just wanders around and survives elsewhere. But yeah, that is it for Babylon. No coming back from that, I'm afraid. No way to build a settler. The Ottomans have added another coastal city as they... They've sort of slowed down um, since their failed war with Byzantium, but they're still here. They obviously have a lot of Turkey still available to them, and all of this sort of northern territory as well towards Assyria. This region still very much open as well, the Levant. Sort of area, Persia pushes with their first city into the mountain range here. They sort of withdrew from their attack, and there we go. Persia completes Alhambra, and then we have Greece versus Byzantium. That's a... Uh, Okay, didn't take, it feels like it was like t 10 turns, I felt like they didn't wait too long, but we'll see how this goes. Yeah, Byzantium could be in trouble as Persia completes Notre Dame, so that's 10 happiness, means they don't have to worry about settling a little bit more in the foreseeable future. Oh, and Greece is allied to Sophia, who now also joins this war. If they actually come and get involved, that would be, I'd feel quite bad, but it looks like they're going to stay in the corner. Egypt with the Hanging Gardens. So extra food, or extra growth, in all their cities, and they have more settlers heading across the Sahara. Egypt is also the most well-fed most well -fed people, living off of the resources of the Nile. Byzantium in second, um, then it is Greece, Persia, and the Ottomans filling out the top five. Persia adding more cities to the north, some of these civs being very expansive. We've seen Arabia do it as well, cities here. Mecca, what the heck happened here? Hello? I'm guessing Egypt just snuck one unit over and pillaged stuff, right? That, what? <laughs> Looks like they've been nuked. I don't know what happened there. 
Egypt must have just had a unit here and snuck through, I don't know. Hagia Sophia, though, is completed for Egypt. And we have a, finally a second religion, Egypt grab Buddhism. It, not even in Thebes, in Memphis, so um, that took a while. And Greece pieced out without taking anything this time. Bit of a bit of a slower approach this time around. Let's let's see who who's gonna be next. Well, I guess they're all kind of separated now. Arabia has another couple of settlers on the way. We know oh, Egypt's going somewhere. Um we've seen Egypt still have another settler out this way, and there's all the coastal area as well that they've not really gone for. They went in the desert. They could definitely go into this grassy area and get some good good but more boats and things like that. Assyria completes Angkor Wat. They have not yet settled anything new. I don't know how the city is stuck at one population. It's been here for a while. And it's got loads of farms. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe they're feeding the food to elsewhere. But yeah, Assyria. Oh, Arabia is going to actually be pretty close to them soon. So we'll see what that leads to as Persia gets the Oracle and a free social policy, of course, with that. 400 AD. We're making our progress time-wise. No one's settling too much. I, don't know, I think aggressive and expansive might be off, which might be my mistake, but um, it's not a huge deal. Uh, this is not the mod list. Uh, where's the mod list? The mod list is on the other side. Um, no, it's not. There you go. So maybe that's playing a part. We are on domination and deity difficulty as Byzantium adds another city here. And we have the World's Congress. I can't embargo city-states this time because they're actually alive. So I'll do the World's Fair and hope we maybe lose the vote next time around. Persia, forward settling Assyria. Not sure how keen they'll be on that. So this could start the first, first sort of civ interaction with Persia. So far they've sort of been pretty much on their own. They do have another settler here already. So this is going to be going to be messy, you can imagine. Egypt grabbed another city over this way as well. Arabia's just put two more down towards Assyria. Three with this one as well. So they are getting very close now. <laughs> Egypt completes Barubadur. Ottomans get the Himeji castle as well. Greece has added a city here on this island. Byzantium has musketmen. I think those are the most advanced units. I don't, I don't, I'm sure someone else maybe has them, but we know Byzantium's leading, or was leading tech a little while ago, so maybe no one is ahead of them. But I'm guessing maybe somebody has musketmen. I think Assyria is going to attack the city state. We'll see though. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll go for. Go for Persia, who have added another city here. Yep, there we go. Assyria declares war on Ur. But it does look like Arabia's thinking about it. Unless this is more defensive. And they have two more settlers on the way. And a third. And a fourth. Oh my goodness. Okay. Ottomans grabbing Machu Picchu. They are being very, very passive. But they do have a finely... Another settler up and ready to go. And Byzantium's going to take more land here in western Anatolia. So that's interesting. Ur requests units. I'm sorry, Ur. Can't help you there. Oh, there you go. Arabia has declared war on the Assyrians. This is going to be big. Assyria, they look strong compared to ba Babylon. They don't look so strong anymore. Um, we'll see how this goes. This is going to be a big fight. But, but Assyria does now have the defensive bonuses and some good units. So I think they'll probably hold on this time around. But you never know. I won't I don't want to jinx it too much for them. Egypt adds another city on the coast. Because so Arabia's here is just growing. They've added another city here. I think Arabia will need to be challenged. They have a lot of space here. Maybe we undervalued how much of this is desert. A lot of this is still very good, like down here. But Persia's also settling, sort of along the Gulf Coast now. Not on the coast, annoyingly, one tile away. But I guess if you settle all of it, it's not you don't need the boats, do you? I guess. One big thing to note this game could be the lack of cargo ships. Could hurt money. Persia can't actually send a cargo ship to anyone at the moment. Assyria don't have any coast. Arabia and Egypt. Egypt can. Um, Arabia can with each other. Greece, obviously Byzantium and the Ottomans have a little bit more freedom there. So they might have... I see more money for these sieves in particular. Um, Egypt's also pushing through here. Pushing up and through with more cities. So we'll see. See if Arabia appreciates that. 
obviously these will be much easier to take than pushing through into North Africa. And there's the Ottomans' new city right next to the city-state of Byblos. And we can see some cargo ships here. Egypt, an Egyptian caravel, a Byzantine settler heading towards Crete, which has already got two Greek settlers on it. And they're grabbing all the islands. They've also added roads, and they now have samurai. I'm guessing they were gifted a samurai. I don't, don't really... <laughs> I'm guessing that's what's happened. Don't know how else Greece got a samurai. Arabia here, or they might actually get Babylon. This would be big, and it looks like Persia is going for the sneak attack on Assyria. Well, not really sneaky. It's pretty... Oh, no, they're backed off. So that would have been a good move, Persia. Get in there, take all the northern cities, because it looks like Arabia is going to get Babylon. This is so close. This is a desperate defense. They have plenty of units, plenty of bowmen. Putting up a fight, but they are now disadvantaged tech-wise. Crossbowmen, pretty powerful unit. And Arabia just keeps settling around them. That is, that, it's like even if you don't, even surviving is still going backwards here because Arabia settling so many cities. It mustn't feel good for Assyria right now. And they are even got more pushing up this way. This is a crazy bout. Um, Persia is matching them so far, which is exciting. They're also settling all over the place. Greece has declared war on Byzantium. We've seen Greece and Byzantium using more settlers recently, so this is at least exciting. World's busiest people. Byzantium, again, I think that's an average, so it is not too useful. And look at that, perfect on turn 150. Here we go, that Arabia was leading. They lost the lead to Persia and are coming back. Then we have third place is Egypt climbing. Then I believe this is, could be anyone. I believe it's the Ottomans though. No, it is Greece in fourth on score. Then I'm guessing that's the Ottomans fifth, Byzantium and Assyria sort of join at the bottom. So you've got Babylon here, not doing too good. We could probably just use the graphs maybe. I, I don't know, let's, let's not, we'll use the normal stats. Populations then, Egypt up to 9.7 million, 9 million for Persia, 8 million for Arabia. I'm just going to do the top three, of course, feel free to pause if you would like to, you know, have a look more in depth at the list. Obviously, if I just read them all out, I forget them all because, you know, I can't just remember things. If you've got a photographic memory, maybe you can, but I, I cannot just remember this list by reading it out once, so it doesn't really make much difference at all. So I may as well just do like the top three. Crop yield, Persia leads the way, then Arabia, and then Egypt. Production, Persia again, then Arabia, and was that the same? Yep. Economy, Egypt flips to the top, then Arabia and Persia. Land, Egypt leads the way ahead of Persia, and then Arabia. Military manpower, Persia currently leads the way, then Arabia, then the Ottomans, actually, in third. Egypt, a bit further down on this category, but they don't necessarily need as much yet, because they're in a corner. Although Persia's in a corner, and theirs is huge. Social policies, Persia leads the way. They did get the Oracle for a free one. You've got Greece, Egypt, Byzantium, Arabia all on 11 as well. So there we go. Uh, what else we got? Happiness. Egypt and Greece currently struggling a bit on happiness. Net gold. We, oh, some of them are losing money already. That is ridiculously bad. I'm guessing Byzantium did just lose all their trade because they were probably trading with Greece, but still. Cities, Persia has 20. Arabia, 18. 15 for Egypt. And then 12 for Greece, some of the bigger ones there. Science output, Persia with the most, then Arabia, then Egypt. Culture output, Persia again leads, then Egypt, then Greece. Wonders, Persia, Greece, Egypt, Arabia there again. So there's a clear top four, maybe. Treasury, you can have a look at, although we don't really use it. Total faith, Arabia is blowing everyone out of the park. Which is okay, I guess. I mean, this is mostly like an Islam part of the map, so it kind of makes sense, right, in terms of where it is in the world. Um... And Greece, Greece was sort of had their own sort of religious beliefs and gods which aren't in the game. So, yeah, I mean Ottomans, Assyria, Arabia, Egypt in particular. Obviously Persia is as well. Well, that's a different type. Um, you got doesn't go into that depth of Sunni and Shia here, but yeah, I mean it kind of makes sense, I guess, that Arabia's religion is doing the best. No one's influential yet, America. <laughs> I saw there was a funny comment about it's it's funny how America is the one with the nuclear submarine spectating the Middle East. Yeah. <laughs> Great works, Greece, Assyria, Byzantium, and tourism. Greece, Assyria, Byzantium. On that American note, it is um just alphabetical. It is not it's not some message <laughs> to the world. <laughs> some secret coded like message. It is just 
it is just that they are the top of the alphabet. I usually use Venice. Um, if I'm if America's in the game, I'll use Venice because Venice probably won't be in the game. And then if Venice is not, well, Venice will never be. But you know, if not, I'll just use America because it's top of the list and I'm lazy. There's no. It could have been anyone. <laughs> I think it would have been cool to add a few more sieves, but at the same time, this I wanted them to like be huge. That was kind of the whole plan. If you remember the superpowers game I did a few months ago, it was like a world map with 15 sieves in it. This is kind of what we were going for. Um, the sieves are meant to be huge, right? They have loads of cities. I mean, in real life, they have loads of cities, so it kind of makes sense. They're supposed to be like huge. But um, we could have probably added some more, you know, if we could. Let's say, let, let's, I mean, Armenia probably would have been one up here. We would have tried to, you know, for, find someone to fit this region, whoever that might be, to just make it a bit more interesting for Persia. Sophia just joined the Warriors Byzantium. There would have been someone down here, obviously. Ideally, maybe someone in this part, and then maybe someone, someone here. You know, if we could have added more. But like I said, I want to see what happens if we just give free reign to some massive sieves and see what they get up to. Persia with the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Byblos also joined the Byzantium War as the Ottomans add more cities along this southern coast of Turkey and one on the north coast. And ba Babylon does keep falling here. Is Egypt is... Ooh, Egypt's going after the city-state of Tyre. That could be a good move, you know. 15 pop, good city. They've got their four cities out this way as well in their sort of new Egypt region. Greece pieces out with Byzantium. They have some rebels. Looks like they got it under control, though. Byzantium has a big amount of boats, and that looks like it was making it quite the challenge for Greece. And there you go, Byzantium pieces out with Sophia. Persia did, they've sort of slowed down, but they did add these four cities. They've maybe backed off a bit. I don't know, are you going to attack Arabia or not? Assyria or not? That is the big question. Or are, you, are they just going to sit here? Do their own thing. They've definitely slowed the settling down. There's another settler here. And up uh, okay, there's three more. Okay, never mind. They're, they're coming. And this scout is looking around. I think we'll see Persia go for this side of the Persian Gulf too. Obviously, we can't also see the strategic resources, so who knows what they might find everywhere. Babylon recap losing Assyria. The Assyrians are putting up a great fight, but this is concerning. <laughs> Arabia with a big force coming in towards Asher, their capital. Not what you want to see. As Egypt adds another city, they're going to connect these two empires pretty soon, or parts of their empire. Egypt does not have too many boats. That is one thing I would note. Ottoman's going to get Cyprus here. Compared to, I mean, Greece doesn't have too many, but Byzantium certainly has a fair few. With every city now being coastal, that does make quite a bit of sense. It seems like the Ottomans may be, may be friends with Byzantium. They have a couple more settlers here too. Banning of sugar. Wow. Fair enough. Just, just going to get rid of that straight away. Yep, Egypt adding more territory. Byzantium moving units around. Ottomans did settle. Here we go. Right, those Persian... Religion founded by the Ottomans. Catholicism. That is... Okay. <laughs> Unexpected. Oh, we've got to make a proposal again. Sugar was banned. I'll just unban it, like, they can vote on that. I, I don't want to, I'm trying not to influence the game, so there you go. I feel like that's the least impactful decision. Arabia with more new cities. This is quite impressive. They've added another one here too, as Persia grabs the red fort and another city here. And this one is also coastal. Not that it actually matters too much. Like I said, if they have control of both sides, it is not too important. But there you go, they are... They're still looking menacing. I think they're going to have to put up a big fight with Arabia. And we probably need someone... One of these probably needs to do better as well. I mean, saying that, Assyria has not lost anything yet. But that doesn't look good. Is Persia going to join? Is their go now? It's taken a while. No. Once again, they didn't pull the trigger. I feel like... <laughs> what are they waiting for? I feel like they don't... They want Arabia to do all the work and then sneak in and take it at the end. But as you can see... Babylon keeps changing hands, and it will probably stay with Arabia this time, but still. Who knows? Egypt also completes the Globe Theatre, and has Gatling guns, which is pretty impressive. Here we go, we'll do one more turn.
for today as Arabia adds another city and the Ottomans also have more settlers starting to push into this more contested region as Persia also builds the Forbidden Palace and their other settlers actually headed in a different direction. Where'd they go? They've disappeared. Um, well, wherever they are, maybe they died? No, I'm sure I just can't see them. Did I hallucinate some settlers? <laughs> They've disappeared. But anyway, that will be it for today's episode. As always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. And I'll see you with the next one.